Hello students, here we are proceeding with the fourth lecture on bird migration and navigation. Three lectures have already been done and this is the fourth lecture in continuation to the third one. Now, as I had told you in the last lecture, authorities have sought three causes of bird migration. And the first was that it becomes very cold in the polar regions. So the birds, uh, the native birds uh, of the North Pole, they migrate to other places for better conditions. This was the first reason. The second reason why the birds migrate, means the cause of the migration of the birds is that birds migrate in the fall because of oncoming shortage of food during the winter. In the breeding areas and owing to shortage, shortage, birds would fail to survive if they stayed for the winter. Birds return in the spring because the northern areas provide more favorable and less crowded conditions for nesting and rearing families. So in the first place, the birds due to harsh weather conditions uh, that was mainly the cold, they had migrated to the other places and from those other places when the conditions get harsh over there means the in the summer when the food uh, is in shortage so they return to their native places because the conditions there have improved by then the third uh, cause which the authorities have uh, sought is this that the intraspecific and interspecific competition for food territory nest size nest sites and so on have been important factors initiating migration so these were the three causes of bird migration three basic causes of bird migration before migrating a bird must be ready to meet the energy requirements for prolonged flight it accomplishes this by eating amounts of food in excess of its daily needs and thereby storing energy in the form of subcutaneous fat. At the same time, the bird must become predisposed to migrate by developing a condition commonly called migratory restlessness. This condition is directly under the influence of pituitary gland whose activity at this time is stimulated by the total effects of day lens. When the bird has attained the necessary physiological and behavioral conditions, an outside stimulus is required to trigger migration. The stimulus is probably some meteorological factor or combination of factors such as a change in temperature of the air, the direction and velocity of wind or the onset of cold. Methods of studying migration. Uh, migration uh, proceed by day or by night. Many birds, example geese, ducks, gulls and shore birds travel by day or night. But this is not the case with many other birds. Hawks, eagles, falcons, crows, hummingbirds migrate only during day. While nearly all passerine birds migrate primarily during the night. At least two explanations have been advanced for the development of nocturnal migration. First is the movement by night affords birds with normally, which normally live in thick vegetational cover and rarely take long flights away from it. The protection of darkness against their day predators. Second, movement by night affords birds the opportunity of using all the day light for daylight hours for feeding, thereby enabling them to build up sufficient energy resources for sustained long distance flights. Yeah. Now, in this slide, there is a table given in which the name of the species 
uh, is being registered and uh, along with the in front of the name there are the details of their breeding area wintering area and the distance the, these two places are apart it means the breeding area it is apart from wintering area by how many miles so let me go through this table the arctic wobbler the first species which is mentioned is arctic wobbler and its breeding area is north europe and north siberia its wintering area is south east asia and the distance between these two places is 4000 to 7000 miles in the same way you can go for every species like the buff breasted sandpiper the breeding area is arctic canada wintering area argentina and uruguay and distance apart they are 6000 to 8000 miles apart from each other the third species great shear water the breeding area is tristan da cunha and the wintering area of the species is north atlantic and the distance they are apart is 6000 to 8000 miles next the golden plover its breeding area is west alaska north siberia and its wintering area is hawaii indonesia and australia and again the distance they are apart is by 6000 to 8000 miles sooty shear water breeding area is new zealand wintering area is north atlantic and the distance 6000 to 9000 miles arctic tern this species uh, breeds in the north canada and its wintering area is antarctica and the distance between them is 11000 miles uh, black and white cuckoo its breeding area is india wintering area is east and south east and it is 3, both of them are 3000 to 5000 miles apart the blue checked bee eater its breeding area is north india and west china and wintering area east africa and the distance between them is 4000 to 5000 miles white stork the breeding area is europe wintering area is south africa and the distance between is 4000 to 7000 miles snow goose it breeds in Alaska and winters in California and they are only 2,000 to 3,000 miles apart. Pintail, Alaska breeding area, Alaska and California and wintering area South America and Hawaii and the distance between them is 1,000 to 4,000 miles. Long tail cuckoo, uh, it is uh, breeding in, its breeding area is New Zealand and the wintering area is Fiji and they are 2,000 miles apart. Ruft, breeding area Europe and Siberia, wintering area South Africa, India and Ceylon and distance between them is 3000 to 6000 miles. Scarlet Crossbeak, the breeding area is Northeast Europe and the wintering area is India, Southeast Asia and the distance they are part, uh, from which they are part is 3000 to 6000 miles. And the last species, the Willow Wobbler, the breeding area is Siberia, wintering area is Africa and the distance between them is 8000 miles. So this table is giving you an idea that the birds travel such long distances for having favorable conditions and for rearing their young ones safely. So here I complete this lecture. This part of the lecture, the bird migration is still to go. There will be one more lecture, I suppose, to finish the topic bird migration. And then we will proceed with the topic navigation. So, one more lecture for bird migration. Uh, here I complete this one. Thank you.